Welcome to the Nevis Newscast. Today is Tuesday, 3rd October 2017. I'm Fredicia Leibard. The newest housing development on Nevis, the Cedarview Housing Development, is expected to see a minimat added on the grounds. Minister responsible for lands, housing and cooperative in the Nevis Island Administration, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, said that as the area develops, the various amenities needed by the people who live there would be provided. And we are now looking at the possibility of constructing a small supermarket or a minimart just on the um, periphery of this particular development. So instead of persons having to trek all the way to Gingerland or to Charleston to do their, their shopping, they can always get that done here. So we want to make it a, a wholesome community where all of the amenities are available. We have a church next door. We have a school. We want to put in the the, the um, sporting facility that is needed for this development and also as I said we're going to at some point construct a small supermarket um, just beyond these houses so that persons can feel comfortable in the area and not worry about having to leave this area to get small items. Jeffers outlined one of the purposes of the housing development in this particular area. When we came up with the idea of this particular housing development it was meant to provide for example the primary school that we have here, St. James Primary School, with, uh, the, uh, with students so as to ensure that we have a longevity of that school. Some talk was there, some thoughts were there of perhaps closing that school, but I believe this particular de development would um, feed that school with um, students for the next, well, over the next two to three years or even five years and beyond. So we are hoping to work on that long-term plan to ensure that we keep our students in this area. The housing development is 5.93 acres and consists of 31 lots, including a common area. The lot sizes range from 5,000 to 6,226 square feet. The area offers views of the Atlantic Ocean with Nevis Peak in the backdrop. Construction has been taking place at the Cedarview Housing Project since its groundbreaking ceremony, which took place on Friday, 24th February, 2017. In related news, the Minister responsible for Lands, Housing and Cooperative, the Honourable Alexis Jeffers, says he stands by the quality of work being executed at the Cedarview Housing Project at Madden's. As you may recall, just two weeks ago, we would have experienced um, Maria, and just prior to Maria, we experienced Irma. All of these houses that you see here would have gone through those two, two hurricanes, albeit we did not get a, di a direct hit. But that being said, we did get some powerful winds here on Nevis, and these houses were able to withstand those winds. Uh, we would have lost some um, felt from some of the houses, uh, which is minor compared to um, overall structural damage which would have been a major concern for us so we want to certainly commend the, um, the quality of the design the quality of the construction and the dedication of the contractors in in adhering to the plans uh, that were and the architectural drawings that were given to them because without that we would have had some serious issues on our hand. He also stated that all of the 31 houses under construction already have owners. All of the houses here, as a matter of fact, all of the lots have uh, been applied for. And as a matter of fact, I would also go on to say that we do not construct houses unless there is a commitment uh, for that house, meaning the down payment has been paid and the necessary applications have been filled out and that is why I am happy that we are taking this particular route so that we have houses that are not going to sit around but someone will be occupying these in short order and I want to at this point commend all of the potential or let's say all of the homeowners who will come here in short order to occupy these houses. Minister Jeffers said in the next couple of weeks the construction of roads to the development will begin and each homeowner will be given a driveway to reduce the roadside parking. The public is notified that all events previously scheduled for the Independence Day celebrations 19th September 2017, namely the ceremonial parade and the Independence Cocktail, will be fulfilled on Saturday 7th October 2017. 
In addition, the public is hereby invited to the ceremonial parade to remember the 34th anniversary of independence of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis to be held at the El Kemido Tea Willet Park on Saturday, 7th October 2017 at 8 a.m. Following the parade, the toast to the nation will take place at 9.30 a.m. and the independence cocktail later that same evening at 7 p.m. All groups and clubs who are interested in participating in the 34th anniversary of Independence Day Ceremonial Parade are asked to be present and punctual for the practice session which will take place at the Alchemidal T. Willett Park grounds tomorrow, Wednesday, 4th October at 4 p.m. Still to come, Mental Health Fair hosted in observance of World Mental Health Awareness Month. The details when we return. Uwali, the Queen of the Caribbees. Bathed by its crystal shores is the Caribbean's best kept secret. Nevis is known for its rich culture, which remains entrenched in the island's everyday life. We boast of having the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, Culturama. The birthplace of Alexander Hamilton, my little 36 square mile island, is the home of the Bath Hotel, which is the first built hotel in the Caribbean. Don't forget to take a dip in the therapeutic Bath Springs. Take a few minutes to trot down to the ever famous Sunshine's Bar and drink a world renowned killer bee. Live Nevis naturally by exploring the magnificent waterfalls and hiking to the top of our 32-32 Nevis Peak. Our lush vegetation and landscape deems a visit here the perfect escape. Nevis, Queen of the Caribbees. Welcome back. The following is a notice from the Ministry of Health. The public is asked to note that the Department of Environmental Health has moved from the Charlestown Health Center and relocated to ground and first floor of the Ricardo Keynes building on Jews Street. The public is asked to be guided accordingly. As part of the Department of Agriculture's Pesticide Awareness Week, a pesticide awareness exposition was hosted over the weekend at the TDC parking lot. Part of the exposition was a variety of booths that ranged from testing locally grown produce to purchasing the appropriate pesticide to protect produce from predators. Quarantine and Crop Protection Officer in the Department of Agriculture, Quincy Bat, explained the type of testing done to test the farmer's produce. We have here um, some lab testing. We, here at the Department of Agriculture, partner with the mission of Taiwan to do lab testing to ensure that the foods that we're eating are safe from pesticide residues. There are two types of pesticide groups that, we, the, that the test is capable of testing. There are organophosphates and carbamates. These groups of pesticides are very hazardous to the human health and the environment. But also did the demonstration of the testing. The Health Promotion Unit, HPU, also had a booth at the event where a health educator at the HPU, Oceana O'Loughlin, explained the proper protective, protective wear when dealing with certain pesticides. So you need to wear boots to protect your feet when using pesticides because pesticides can be absorbed through your skin. So that's why you should wear boots, you should also wear gloves as well as a respirator, a mask, and goggles as well as a full body suit. We are also encouraging persons to wash their hands and face after pesticides use, wash them thoroughly because as I said before, pesticides can be absorbed through the skin. Mm -hmm. Also, we should always, always wash our vegetables and fruits as well as always wash our hands, not only when using pesticides alone. Coordinator at the HPU, Nadine Carty Kane, showcased the proper method of thoroughly washing hands as well as fruits and vegetables before consumption. We always encourage persons to wash their fruits 
and to also wash their vegetables before they use them. Sales clerk at the Agro Department in TDC, Nelson Williams, explained the various pesticide products that can be used by farmers on the island. Local farmer Emmantine Thompson also had a stall at the exposition. Pesticide Awareness Week was hosted under the theme, Biodiversity Managing Pesticides Responsively. The Ministry of Health and the Health Promotion Unit, HPU, in the Nevis Island Administration, NIA, hosted a mental health fair to commemorate the 2017 World Mental Health Awareness Month, which commenced in September and will continue throughout October. Residents on Nevis visited their station at the Memorial Square in Charlestown, where they received blood sugar and blood pressure checks. Communications officer at the HPU, Sheila James, along with community psychiatric manager nurse Meredith Amory Field, conducted a discussion during the fair educating the participants about mental health. We are actually in celebration of World Mental Health Day, which is actually celebrated around the world on the 10th of October. But the Ministry of Health and the Health Promotion Unit are actually plug in. Today, we've got a group of people. We've got a member from the general public, Bernal. We have the professionals from the mental health team and nurses. And we're going to discuss what mental health means to the individual. Now, professionals are well cued about what that means. But for us to understand the populace, we have to speak to people from the general public because that's where we're going to get our information and our data on how we move things forward with mental health. Part of the activities for World Mental Health Awareness Month was a sensitization to mental health hosted by Mrs. Amory Field, where she educated the auxiliary staff in the Ministry of Health about mental health in the workplace. Employee at the flamboyant nursing home, Michelle Slack, gave an overview of the sessions. It was very informative. Um, I learned quite a lot. Um, the way that I thought about mental health, I have a different feeling now. I understand mental health right now, especially in the workplace. That was the topic. And I really understand small things like stress can lead to such things that can even lead to mental health issues that could lead to this. It was generalized because as you know I work in a nursing home some of the residents would suffer Alzheimer's and other diseases that that surrounds mental health so hence the reason why it was so it, it was a tool to use especially in the workplace. She explained that the sessions should be hosted more regularly as well as persons in the community should be more informed about mental health. It should happen annually and even even throughout the, uh, the months you could include small programs that will inform people about health issues that we're dealing with. The community should really bo be more informative about such that is happening in, uh, in our society today, especially in the small Caribbean islands where we're so not educated about such and I think they should have more programs to educate us on such. The theme for this year's World Mental Health Awareness Month is Mental Health in the Workplace. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Fredicia Liburd. Thank you for viewing.